Welcome to Lifestyle Solopreneur, the community for entrepreneurs who put lifestyle first. Join your host, Flavia Barris, as she interviews successful lifestyle solopreneurs and shares ideas to help you find the perfect balance between lifestyle, business, and self. Flavia is an attorney, marketing expert, and founder of several online academies. She's been featured in major media, including BBC World News, The Wall Street Journal, The New York Post, ESPN Television, and more. Join us for this episode of Lifestyle Solopreneur. Hey, Lifestyle Solopreneurs. Today we get to speak with Lainey Hauser. She believes that life should be easy and that making money and building an abundant life you love is the most fun. She helps women create joy around making money and building a business. It wasn't always this way. She previously built a seven-figure business that led her to overwhelm, depression, and burnout. It got so bad, she went to inpatient treatment for depression for an entire month. She let go of everything in her life and for a time even went on food stamps. Seven figures to food stamps is a long spiral down, but it ended up being a sweet time where she learned what it meant to truly be happy. Since then, she has learned a thing or two and has created a life of joyful prosperity and teaches others to do the same. She now knows that healing your money story heals every relationship in life and is the only way to build a business that you truly love. She loves to help others crack their money code and create life-giving six and seven figure businesses and live the abundant life they deserve. She is a frequent conference and summit speaker and is finishing up her first book this fall, which I'm sure we'll hear about now. Welcome to the show, Lainey. Thank you, Flavia. Thank you so much for having me. I'm super excited to be here and just to share my story. If I can help one person avoid the kind of burnout that I experienced, it's worth it. It's worth everything. So your story has some twists and turns, I have to say. So tell us a little bit about that journey. Yeah. So I was a mental health therapist and I was, first of all, I was working in a university setting. I was a dean at a, at a university and was teaching courses. And then I realized that I could make more money working for myself and have more flexibility for working for myself or so I thought at the beginning. And so I started off in, a, in an adventure to work for myself and built a practice. I had nine employees. I had office staff. I had other therapists working for me. So I built this huge kind of empire. And I ended up getting totally burned out. I was doing all the things, even though I had staff, I was still doing all the marketing. I was doing all the things that you think about when that a CEO of a business that she owns does maybe some of the things that you do in your life. So I was doing all the things, including seeing clients. And I was working with severe trauma, really, really, really serious trauma. And so My home life was falling apart. My marriage was falling apart and my whole life was kind of coming, crashing down around me, but it didn't just happen overnight. It was about two years in the making for me where I, two years leading up to my crash and before I went to inpatient treatment for depression, my life was kind of spiraling down and I kept trying to hold on to it and trying to make things work. And there was plenty of money. The money wasn't the issue. So one thing I know is that money isn't the thing that makes us happy, but I couldn't keep all all the balls in the air, all at the same time, trying to keep my marriage together and this business going, working with these very tender clients. And my kids were teenagers and my life just literally unraveled. And so at the height of my business where I was I was working a lot. I was actually working too much because I wanted to stay away from my home. That was just so much chaos there. My office was sort of a safe place for me. So I would stay working really long hours. And that, of course, never works, right? You know, you think you can do one thing to offset something else. And that doesn't work when put into real life. And so I crashed and I found myself in December about seven years ago calling a treatment center saying, what do I do? I don't even know my favorite color. I'm crying every day. I stop enough just to be able to do a few things. And then I'm crying again. I want to kill myself and I don't have hope that the future is going to be much different. And so I, they had a place for me and I went three days later. So it was really quick. It was like, get your things in order and come. And I spent a month there and I was in such bad shape. I was walking around. I was in Edmonds, Washington. It's a lovely, lovely treatment center. So if you ever do find yourself in a place like this, I highly recommend 
the center a place of hope. It was truly an amazing experience. Even though I spent every day crying, even in the middle of the night, I wake up crying. My life was that unraveled and it was a really, really dark. And yet at the same time, this beautiful place, it was like, you know, burying my whole life and everything died and I had to rebuild from there. So I got out of treatment. Well, first of all, I walked around treatment, the treatment center. I went, how did I get here? What in the world happened that I am in a place where 10 people on my team have to care for me because I can't really care for myself. I couldn't even barely eat. I had lost so much weight. I was really, really in really bad shape. And so I got out. I was stable. I got out and I literally gave up everything in my life. I moved out of my house. I moved into a little condo that my parents owned. So I had a free place to stay. Really grateful for that. And I didn't even take anything with me. I didn't care about my stuff. My stuff didn't matter. And so I lived in this little condo, but it was right by the river. So it was a really beautiful setting right by the Columbia River outside of Portland, Oregon. And I spent my days walking the river, just rebuilding my mind and restructuring my life. My marriage, crazy story about that's a whole nother podcast, but I let go of my marriage. So I thought we were going to get divorced. I was proceeding with that. Crazy enough, we're still married and we had a really happy marriage, which is total miracle and amazing. And I'm really grateful for that. But I um, just spent my days walking the river. My kids were all really mad at me. So my relationship with them was really fragile. I was really fragile. I had let go of my business and I helped each therapist do their own thing. So I helped them each start their own business. So that was dismantled and I had no money. And so I found myself driving up in my brand new, I had a brand, I had no idea that my life was going to fall apart. So I had this brand new Acura ILX hybrid and I was pulling up to this little church, pulling into this little dirt parking lot to go and to get food from the food bank. And I can remember sitting in my car, sobbing, thinking, wow, this is quite a journey to be in. And then I went to the social services and put myself on food stamps so that I had something to support myself, at least money to eat. Fortunately, at that point, my car got really great gas mileage and I started my life over. Took a few years off and then began to, during those few years, so I studied happiness, Flavia, I began to study what really constitutes happiness, what really constitutes joy. I studied all the things, the resilience, the the grit, all the things that are Martin Seligman out of UPenn began to study his work and even got certified in what it means to be happy. And so, and just began to employ some of those things so that I could really, really literally change my brain and my life. And so here I am, I have a very successful business. I help women find joy in their lives. That's one of the things I do. But the other thing I do is help women um, create new money stories, crack their money code, because whether you're making seven fig- figures, eight figures, it doesn't matter. If you're not happy, you've got nothing. And so really using money is kind of the tool or the vehicle, one of the vehicles to create a life of happiness. Because Certainly, I will say that life is a lot better with money than on food stamps. But yeah, so that's kind of my journey in a nutshell. And so that's where I've been and nowhere to go but up from there. Oh, yeah. Your story is, I mean, thinking and imagining you in that. But it did make me think of something kind of odd. They say that you are the average of the five people you spend the most time with. And I know that people talk about that in a personal development way, like, hey, you should, you know, up your network so that you are uh, hanging out with and networking with people that are in that field you want to be in or have that level of success that you're going for because you tend to sort of go with the crowd and I guess not just birds of a feather flock together, but the more that you flock with a particular group, the more that you'll become them. And so you should be with people you aspire to be more like. But Uh I wonder if that same principle is kind of what sabotages people who work in industries like yours, um, Uh you know, in therapy type, either Uh you're a therapist or a psychologist, psychiatrist, or even if you work in social work, or if, you know, your job has you work in family law. And so you're always, Uh you know, families that are and conflict and fighting. And I wonder if some of that energy just kind of bleeds into your own soul, into yourself, and is sort of partly to blame for the direction your own life, your own feelings, your own mind took. And I don't know how you feel about that theory. I'm not sure it's a theory. It was just something that came to mind as an aha while I listened to your story. 
Flavia, 100%. I think that was a huge piece of it. I was working with severely traumatized. Most of them were what we call dissociative identity disorders. So they were multiple personalities and so severe trauma. So I'm working with that during the day. Not all my clients were that. I had clients, other stuff too. And I was working with eating disorders and for sure, I think that for sure, one of the things that I've done since I've been out of treatment and learned that principle, I am very, very careful about who I let into my life. I'm very careful about saying anything negative and complaining, really watching my words and what I say. So there's a lot that goes into that, but I... Yes, for sure. I think that it's so dark and so heavy. You know, the vibration is so low. When you think of just on a purely energy level of working in that field, it's the constant lower energetic vibration that's always happening. And we know that joy rocks up around at a frequency of in the four to five hundreds, you know, 478. I make meditations and my meditations are recorded on the frequency of 478 so that it's kind of in that joy field. And so for sure, I think that is, yes, if you're in one of those fields and experiencing some of the things that I've talked about, I would say, Flavia, that is yes, a definite yes. And we've got to do other things. You know, if you're going to stay in that field, you've got to do other things in your life to offset some of that just some of the energy and the, you know, the lower vibration, we've got to do other things. And now I structure my day around me and keeping myself, my self-care. That's what I structure my day around. Sounds counterintuitive, but it works really well. Absolutely. No, that's so important. And so tell us a little bit about the coaching and what you do now as your business. Would you consider yourself a life coach, a mentor? Do you do you still think of yourself as working in the mental health field or have you expanded into just your own niche that you've made up? Tell us about your business as it stands today. Yeah. So my underlying, um, all of my work that I do is the premise of joy and creating joy around whatever it is that you're doing, you know, whether it's a business or being a therapist, or I work with executives, I've worked with CEOs and VPs. So I've really, for me, I've up leveled my game. I'm working with severe trauma down over to working with people who are very successful and helping them really with performance, peak performance, helping them perform at a peak level. So I would say, yes, I'm definitely, it's, I think that's mental health, you know, it all goes together. What we think about, we become, you know, I have a little, just a little post-it note on my wall that says thoughts, feelings, vision, goals, and it has arrows between each one. Thoughts, feelings, vision, goals, plans, action, results. So if you don't like the results that you're having, it goes circular back into what you're thinking about. So for sure, I'm still in the mental health field, but everything I do goes under joy. So yes, I coach men and women. I love coaching. I think it's freaking amazing because I've seen people get further in 90 days to six months than I did in three, four, five years of therapy, even my healthy clients in three, four, five years therapy, because coaching is so, so different. So yeah. So I um, work with entrepreneurs, executives, and people who just want a different life than what they're experiencing. And the great thing about it is wherever you're at, you've created that. Like you have created your life So whatever results and whatever you're experiencing right now in this very moment, you've created it. I think that is the best news ever. It is so good because it means you can create something entirely different starting tomorrow, starting this afternoon. You can create an entirely different life. So I realized that looking back and where I was, I created that even though at the time I blamed all my external circumstances. I can look back and went, oh yeah, I created that by a bunch of different choices that I made and how I thought about things and what my brain was doing and what I let my mind wander to. And I don't do that anymore. I really, really take really focus on what my brain is thinking about, who I'm hanging out with, what I'm doing, what I say yes to, what I say no to. I asked myself, you know, does this create joy? This morning I, I got on my scale and I do that every once in a while. Like, oh, I better, you know, just should check in. And I asked myself, I have also a history of eating disorder. And so that's why I was in eating disorder work. But I asked myself, you know, does this bring me joy? This was just this morning. And I realized, you know what? It really doesn't. So I'm not going to do that anymore. And so it's those kind of things, you know, it's those small choices. That's not a very big choice, but eh, it really doesn't bring me too much joy. And I weigh the same thing every single time I set up on the scale. So what's the point? You know, so it's those kind of little things in our life that we often don't think about. But when we turn on the, does this bring me joy question? Is this, this little tiny thing that I'm thinking about, or this little tiny thing action that I'm taking, does it bring me joy? 
And if the answer is no, do something else, you know, create something else in your life. So that is the bulk. The bulk of my work is really, really helping people create more joy. I love doing it through money because I made seven figures and I wasn't happy. And so now I really help people dig into their money story. Money is a vehicle that can heal every single relationship in your life, which is so cool to think about. Um, so if your money is a mess, I can help you definitely. If you're, you know, working a business and you're like, where did all the money go at the end of the month? And you're making great money, even if you're not making great money, but you're like swirling in the land of finances. It's definitely a starting point for healing your life, your business, loving your life and creating something new because money also is energy. So, and what we do with it matters. So what's one of those first things that you help somebody who needs to change their money story? Just one quick tip that you can give to everyone listening that will help them in that area of their life. Yeah. So, so what I call them is money blocks, which really, it's really like a money trauma, right? So if you're struggling in an area, sit down and think about what is it that's blocking me from getting the money that I want? When I started to do this work, I realized my parents divorced when I was four. My dad is a teacher. My dad grew up in a very wealthy family. My grandparents were extremely wealthy. And he became a teacher to basically say F you to his parents. And my mom got remarried to a man who was a corporate executive. He was a vice president of the telephone company, which is now at t after divestiture. So he worked his way up the ladder from a janitor to a vice president. So he worked his tail off. So I had these two opposing money stories until I began to unpack it. I did not understand that my dad taught me that you don't want to work that much. Like he didn't want to work as much as his dad did. So he became a teacher. So he'd have two months off, but then he always struggled with money. Always, always growing up. My dad never had enough and he was struggling with it. And on the other hand, I had this stepdad who was bringing in half a million dollars a year. I mean, just oodles of money, but he was never home. He was always gone. He was always traveling. He was traveling the world. He was in charge of all the cables that go under the water. So before we had cell phones, we had cables that went under the water and he was in charge of that worldwide. And so I saw these two opposing dads that told me two different stories. And when I sat down and I looked at, so I did my money history. So this is one thing you can do, just for sit down and write some of the things that you learned from your parents about money and how those have affected you. And when I began to unpack that, I began to see, oh my gosh, I believe these two opposing things. No wonder I'm struggling. So that's just one exercise. Begin to just write down, take one parent and write down how they thought about money and how that's been superimposed on your life. And then do it with another parent. And if you're like me and you've got four parents, you know, do it with all four or five or however many people have influenced your story, whether it's a mentor and just write down the things that they how their money story impacted you. And not to blame, I don't blame my parents. It's just a way of opening your eyes to see how you have experienced money in your life. For example, my mom still says, I can't afford it. My stepdad makes half a million dollars a year. What is she talking about? Like, what the heck are you talking about? But she grew up so poor, she couldn't afford anything, but she's never let her go of that old money story that she couldn't afford things. That's the kind of thing that I'm talking about. Here's this woman who's, you know, in her seventies now, and she still says she can't afford it. And she's been married to my stepdad for 40 years, making oodles of money. So there's no, doesn't matter how much you make your money story impacts every decision that you make with money, with your business, even with your time. So as you can see, you know, two different time stories, two different money stories with my dad's. So That's just a great place to start just to ask yourself, hey, how did my mom think about money and how does that impact me today? I've made it a very, very conscious effort to never, ever, ever say I can't afford it. Mm -hmm. It's one thing that does not, you'll never hear me say that. So that's a great tip. Never program your own brain by telling yourself I can't afford that because you know what? If you believe it and you say it, well, then you can't, (laughs) you know, just just kind of self-perpetuating. Yeah, yeah. If you take away one thing, that's a great thing to take away. Yeah. Another great bonus tip. All of that is really good advice. So you have a book. Tell us about this book that's coming out. How do people get on the wait list for that? How do they connect with you? Awesome. Thanks. Yeah. So I have a book coming out and it's called how it's called picking daisies, but the subtitle is how to, how to create a life you love with a life you've got. In other words, how do you take the life that you have right now? 
you, whatever you're experiencing right now and turn it into something that you love. And so it's really a memoir. It's a story of my own life. I got the title because when my oldest daughter was young, she played t-ball and she would go out into the field. She was always like, I think I'm right field doing nothing. And instead of being bitter or upset that she was playing, she would sit down and she would pick all the daisies in the field and she would make a daisy chain crown so that by the time the game was over, she was wearing a crown on her head. And I thought, you know, so we had this joke in our family, this running joke that if you're not playing to your best, if you're not playing full out, you're picking daisies, you know, you're just out there picking daisies. So when the kids would play soccer or basketball or whatever, my husband and I would be in the stand saying, oh my gosh, they're picking daisies. So it's a little personal story, but it's also just a great metaphor. Here's this five, six-year-old saying, I don't really like my life right now. So I'm going to sit down, I'm going to pick daisies and I'm going to make a crown instead. And so that's kind of the story. The, the nugget of my book is doesn't matter what circumstances you're in, you can still create something right where you are at. You can create what you love right now, right here where you're at. Right now, right here. I love that. And that is, I mean, we are where we are, right? So a lot of people who aspire to a different life or have goals, that's phenomenal. That's great. But you do also have to sit with where you are right now. So you know where you're starting from. And I agree with you when you said earlier that we really do create our life. So whatever your situation is right this minute, you've made decisions and you have attracted certain energies into your life and you've made choices that have brought you to this point, but it's sort of unlimited what you can do from here. That's kind of the beauty of life. And a lot of people say, no, there's limits there. Mm. You know, you can't just do anything you want. And sure. I mean, the laws of physics and a few things do apply, but I think people can do a lot more than they might realize they can do and make shifts that are so beyond their, um, their worldview, that it's not even on the menu for them, but it does exist on the menu in the world. Like you can expand your menu into many more things. You know, and that's the great thing about it, Flavia, is that totally agree. You know, if you're watching someone else do it, it means you can do it, right? It's just like this, instead of being jealous or comparing yourself to look at someone else and say, oh, if she's doing that, I can do that as a way to aspire to something that maybe right now is outside of your realm of what you know, but certainly it exists in the world, then it can exist out there. You know, I often think of Elon Musk and what he's created. The stuff that he's created did not exist before he had it in his mind, before he thought of it. And from there, he went on to create some of the most amazing technology that the world has known. But it started with a little seed in his mind. And so that's what's available to you, a little seed in your mind. And you can create, if you can dream it, if you're thinking about it, you can make that happen. You can create that, create that. Absolutely. For people that want to connect with you, what is the best place for them to do that? So either they have listened and said, you know what, I need coaching from Lainey or, and, or if they want to read your book, which I'm sure a lot of people are excited about that book and want to take a look, where should they go now to connect? So my website is getting an overhaul, but you can certainly go to my website and connect with me there, laneyhauser.com. The other place you can connect with me is my LinkedIn is also getting an overhaul. I'm in this process of like overhauling everything, right? So it's been this season of like, oh, everything needs new. When I'm coming out with a book, it's like, everything needs new, but you can connect with me on LinkedIn. You can connect with me on Instagram. I, one of the things that I do is travel. So um, you'll see lots of traveling on there. Like I said, I've create, gone from creating a life that I was miserable in to a life that I love. And one of the things I love to do is explore culture and in the world. So I travel. So if you wanted to message me and get a hold of me and to work with me, that's probably the easiest way. Just per, uh, private message me either on Instagram. You can go to my website. And especially by the time this comes out, it, my website should be done. So yeah, you can book a call with me. Probably the best way is just to go on my calendar and pick a time that works for you. And we can do a discovery call and see if, you know, working with me is something that would be helpful for you. I work usually in six month blocks with people and the result they, they get is phenomenal. I will say that about myself. I help people create different lives. Really, really love what I do. Love my work. and so. 
grateful, so grateful for my crash so that I could find something totally different that inspires me every single day. And Lainey, thank you so much for sharing your time with us today. So everyone go to laineyhauser.com. Be sure to connect with Lainey uh, through her website, but also on her social media. And I just want to extend uh, just an expression of thanks and gratitude for having you on today. Thanks, Lainey. Thank you so much, Flavia, for having me. And thank you for inviting me. It's been really, really fun. I love sharing my story. And I hope that this blesses you and that you're inspired to go create something new today. Guess what, lifestyle solopreneurs? If you don't yet have an online business earning you enough passive income to live the life of your dreams, I'd like to suggest you consider trying out Kajabi. Kajabi is an all-in-one solution where you can create and teach online courses, publish a paid newsletter, launch a free or paid podcast, process payments, build one-on-one coaching portals for your clients, and much, much more. I personally use Kajabi to power numerous successful and profitable online businesses. Lifestyle solopreneurs, there's a free trial of Kajabi waiting for you at this link, www.kfreetrial.com. You can try Kajabi for free, no obligation, by going to www.kfreetrial.com. Again, kfreetrial.com, and that K stands for Kajabi. Starting an online business helped me break free from that corporate grind, and I hope it does the same for you. You have nothing to lose and absolutely everything to gain. Thanks so much for tuning in today. Don't forget to subscribe to the show and see you next time.